Do you know what God has tasked for you to do? Don't think for one second that you have completed this task by joining the church. Don't think that you have completed the task by being baptized. Don't think that you have completed the task by going to church every Sunday. Don't think that you completed the assignment because you go to Bible study every Wednesday. Because again, I want you to understand that you haven't did anything yet. God, he has given us principles. He has given us values to live by. And as we saw in my sermon last week, those principles, those values, they are certainly that of love and compassion. Mm -hmm. You have heard me teach. You have heard me preach about this over the years. That again, we are to be compassionate to all of those that are around us. We are to offer our help to all of those that are in need of our help. You see, I focus on this. I teach and I preach about this so much because we as a child of God, we are to know that this is the task that the Lord has for us. This is our assignment because again, it is encouraged of us to help all of those that are in need throughout his word. However, whenever we hear the preacher stand up and say, help someone who is in need, we, ah, oh, here we go again. We roll our eyes. Some of us, we, we get like that rich young ruler. And we will say, Pastor, I already do that. We say, I, I help people all the time, Pastor. And, and we'll think in our minds, well, this message, it ain't for me. And, and the reason why this message ain't for me, because I already do that. And so because I already help people, I don't need to hear this one. You know, we start thinking about we start thinking about the Falcons game. We we start thinking about the Braves. We we start thinking about what's gonna be for dinner. All right. We 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 begin to tune out because we already got this one in the bag. You know, we we perfect. We we don't need to hear this message for the for the one thousandth or the two thousandth or the three thousandth time. I say to you today, uh, you, if you already do that, of course, that's it's certainly a good thing that you have helped someone who is in need. Mm -hmm. And most of the times when we start to think about helping someone in need, we, we, we think about this. We, we Let me pull my wallet out for you. We think about this. I happen to have a few dollars in here. We think about giving this, don't we? All right. All right. We, 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 think about, we think about giving that. That's how we think about what it means for us to, to help someone who is in need. And, and you know, when we tell the pastor, yeah, I already helped those who are in need. Mm -hmm. If the pastor is like me, you know, after you've done giving me that spill and after I'm done nodding my head and, and I say, that's a good thing, I may say to you, well, what else do you do to help someone who's in need? All right. Some of us, we... We start to look at the pastor like he kind of crazy. You know, we, we start to scratch our head and we try to figure out, well, what else is there to do? I already gave them what was in this right here. What else is there for me to give? What else am I supposed to do? I want you to understand today that life doesn't boil down to just money. Come on, come on. See, I want you to understand today that this way of thinking mm -hmm. is a way to say that money is all that anyone needs. Come on, come on. The only thing that anybody ever needs help with in life to be able to make it is the dollar bill. 
Yeah, yeah. I want you to understand today that this way of thinking is a worldly mindset. And you know how big I am on preaching against a worldly mindset. Because we are spiritual creatures. And as spiritual creatures, we should have a spiritual mindset, don't you think? A prime example of the task that God has for you, it is shown in some background scripture that I'm going to quickly pull from here from the 10th chapter of Luke's gospel. All right. And in the 10th chapter of Luke's gospel, we come across a parable that, mm -hmm. that Jesus taught that sets an example for the task that the Lord has for all of us as his children. Mm -hmm. The parable that I speak of is the parable of the good Samaritan. Right. How many of us have heard this parable before? You see, in this parable, we learn that there are, that there are more ways mm -hmm. to help than the spare change that may be in our pockets, mm -hmm. if you happen to be following me. Mm -hmm. Let's remember here that the parable, if you know it, it shows us a Samaritan mm -hmm. that he saw someone who was left beaten mm -hmm. on the side of the road. And many people had passed this person by, but the Samaritan didn't pass this person by. Mm -hmm. The Samaritan, he stopped and he bandaged the wounds of the one that had been left beaten by the side of the road. Mm -hmm. And scripture tells us that after bandaging the wounds, after taking them out of the road, that the Samaritan, he brought the man to town and he stopped at an inn. He took this wounded person to an inn. Now, money does get brought up in this parable. Right. It was brought up when the Samaritan, he gave the person at the end some money to take care of the one that he had brought in. Mm -hmm. Though money happens to be involved at that point, money wasn't the moral of the parable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, the moral of the parable was the show of love the show of compassion, the show of mercy from the Samaritan. That was, I don't know if you're following along with me, that was the show of help from the Samaritan. One was in need, not of money, by the way. One was in need of help, and the Samaritan didn't pass that one by. The Samaritan stopped and the Samaritan helped. Mm -hmm. The Samaritan went over and beyond. Mm -hmm. I brought up my brother last week. I'll bring him up again here. And this may perk his ears up uh, when he stops and he listens to this sermon. What would I look like if I saw my brother on the side of the road mm -hmm. in need of help and I stopped and I said, oh, let me... I got a, I got my five dollars in here. Let me give you this five dollars and let me continue on along the way. Jesus said to us that when one asks of us to go a mile, we should double it. We should go an extra mile. What do we as believers, what do we look like when we see someone in need of help and we turn up our heads and we keep on going? No, I don't want to say here that giving away money is easy because it's not. You know, we have to think hard on it. That's the hardest part about giving away that dollar bill. Is, is the thinking part, you know, whether or not we can spare that dollar. But it don't take much effort to pull out this, does it? It doesn't take much effort for me to reach in when I decide to give. Now, I don't want you to think for one second that I'm encouraging you not to give that spare change. Because, again, it is certainly a good thing to give what you have. God loves a cheerful giver. But that said, here in my key verse for today, 
we'll see where one asks another, how can I, and I'm going to sub in the word understand here. One asks another, how can I understand unless someone does what? Guides me. How can I understand unless someone guides me? I want you to understand today that you and I are called to help in more ways than one. Peter said to a beggar that was in need, he said, silver and gold, I don't have it. I don't have that. But what I do have is the name of Jesus. And in the name of him, rise up and walk. I want you to understand today that we must not limit ourselves. That's what we do when we think that this is all that we have. Don't limit yourself any longer. We must not limit the ways in which we can help those that are in need. Let us again remember from our sermon last week that in Paul's letter to the Ephesians, Paul, he called on us to walk worthy of the calling with which we have been called. And I feel I must put emphasis on the use of the word walk there in that statement from Paul here. You see, the reason why I feel I must put emphasis on, on walk there is because walking, that's an action. You see, in order for you to walk, it, it takes some kind of effort for you to walk. So for Paul to say walk worthy, he was saying that you must put forth an effort to complete the task that has been assigned to you by the Lord. Are you putting forth the effort today? You see, when you walk worthy of the calling, Paul, he said to the Colossians that such an effort, it will please the Lord. And the reason why it will please God is because you are striving to be fruitful and every good work. That is what the Lord desires of you. And we've seen this earlier this year where the Lord, he desires for you, his child to bear good fruit. Are you being fruitful today? You see, you cannot be fruitful if you're sitting down on the assignment. If you have gone to sleep, you, you can't be fruitful when the task has been assigned to you by the Lord. And so again, I ask you today, are you putting forth the effort? As I have said quite a bit recently, it saddens me that many of us believers aren't putting forth the effort. Many of us, we have become like the Laodicean church. If you remember that church from the third chapter of the book of Revelation, we remember that that church had went lukewarm in its heart. Some of us, we are like the church of Ephesus. If you remember that church from the second chapter of the book of Revelation, which I believe I referenced last week, I may be off on that. I am getting the Bible study ready. But with that church, that church had went bitter in its heart. Some of us, we are lukewarm in our heart to where we don't care to help someone who's in need. Some of us, we call ourselves laboring for the Lord, but we do it in bitterness. And as I said last week, when you are laboring for, the, when you call yourself laboring for the Lord and you're doing it out of bitterness, your labor, your faith, it is incomplete. All right. All right. You aren't putting forth the effort. Mm -hmm. Again, are you putting forth the effort today? Yeah. Yeah. See, God, he has a task for you. He has an assignment for you. And I would ask you today, do you know what that assignment is? Do you know what God has tasked for you to do? Uh, don't think for one second that you have completed this task by joining the church. Don't think that you have completed the task by being baptized. Don't think that you have completed the task by going to church every Sunday. Don't think that you completed the assignment because you go to Bible study every Wednesday. Because again, I want you to understand that you haven't did anything yet. I hope you church going folk heard me when I said that. I know some, when they watch this or when they listen to this, they'll frown. But that's okay. Again, I want you to understand that you shouldn't think for one second that you did anything because you 
joined one of the church ministries. It's a good thing, but you haven't done anything yet. Don't think that you completed the assignment because you joined the choir or because you are on the Ursa board or because you are a deacon or because you became a pastor or you preach. You haven't did anything just yet. You must begin the labor. You must begin to put forth an effort. You see, there's some who solely rely on joining the church, going to church every Sunday. But as we have seen before, that becomes an act of religion. Whereas what God is concerned with is your actions of faith. Are you putting forth the effort today? You see, if you don't plan on taking action in your faith, I would ask you, why did you go to the Lord? Why did you join the church? Why were you baptized? Why do you say that you believe? Was it for one of the church roles? Was it for some kind of power that you thought that you would have? Some kind of authority that you that you think you'll have? I hope not. You and I, we must remember that when Jesus called the first of his disciples, he called for them to follow him. And in doing so, Jesus said that he would make them fishers of men. He didn't even say anything about heaven when he had called them. That came after they chose to follow. Fishers. Are you a fisherman today? See, many of us, we think that our assignment is solely to get to heaven. But I'd like again to say to you today that that's not simply your assignment. God has a task for you. As the child of God, we must realize that Jesus has tasks for us that it needs to be done. You see, after his resurrection, Jesus, he said to the disciples that he fulfilled what was written in the law of Moses as it was necessary that repentance that remission of sins, listen to this part, yeah. repentance and the remission of sins, Jesus said that that should be preached. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He said it should be preached in his name to all people. Yeah, yeah. God has a task for you. Yeah. That task doesn't call on you to be selfish. You and I, I want you to understand today that we are tasked with preaching to others that assignment of repentance and remission. The remission of sins. We are tasked with preaching to others to turn away from sins. We are tasked with preaching to others about God's mercy and his forgiveness. God has a task for you, and that task, it calls on you to guide others. All right, all right. Your task is to help build them up. Here in the eighth chapter of Acts, we'll see that Luke, he records a very beautiful example for us to follow here when it comes to the task of helping those in need, specifically guiding others. We'll see here in the, eighth in the eighth chapter of Acts that it follows Philip, who was one of Jesus's 12 disciples, as we'll see him laboring for the Lord. Philip, he had an assignment. And we saw, we'll see here that, that Philip, he, he was carrying out his assignment. First, we'll see there that he was preaching Christ in Samaria. We'll see that at the opening of the eighth chapter of Acts, where at the preaching uh, that he was doing in Samaria, We'll see that many, we're told there in the fifth through the eighth verse, they heeded his words. We'll see that they were healed. I want you to understand that they were healed physically. They were healed spiritually. And scripture tells us that there was much rejoicing in the preaching that, that Philip was doing there. We'll see that after his laboring there in Samaria, we are told there in the 26th verse that there was an angel of God that came and spoke to Philip. And there was an assignment for Philip. We'll see that the angel told him to go toward the south along the road 
which went down from Jerusalem to Gaza. And we see there in that verse, right there at the end of the verse, that scripture makes it clear. It points out to us that Philip was headed to the desert. I love that scripture adds this note in for us. Because we would look at this and, and many of us would say, man, the angel, we would say that God was, was sending Philip out into the middle of nowhere. That's what some of us would say. So why was God doing this? Why was God sending Philip into the desert? Why was God sending Philip out into the middle of nowhere? There in the 27th verse, scripture tells us that there was an Ethiopian man, a eunuch who was of Candace, who was the queen of Ethiopia. And we're told that in the middle of nowhere, in the desert, the Ethiopian, this eunuch, was in need of help. I would say to all of you that this shows us that God is always aware, no matter where you are. You can be in the middle of nowhere in need of help and God will know it. And God will send help your way. If you don't believe it, you see it right here. And again, I would testify of that myself. I've been lost at one point in time in life and God showed me the way. I don't know about the rest of you, but again, I would say, tell all of you that God, he always is guiding me. The Lord is always showing me the way. And when I need help, when I need assistance, he gives it to me. We'll see here in scripture that what led the eunuch to be in this place was the fact that he had been worshiping in Jerusalem. That tells us something about the man already. And we're told that he was making his way back home after being in worship service. And while he was returning home, I believe that, you know, during this worship service, the, the preacher, if you will, must have been preaching about the, the suffering servant, must have been preaching something from Isaiah. And I believe that the eunuch was thumbing his way through the book of Isaiah. And specifically, I would tell you all that he was in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. I know this because of what is said there in the 32nd and in the 33rd verse. That passage of scripture it is very familiar to me. And we'll see that as Philip was arriving on the scene, the Holy Spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. You see, the eunuch was Philip's assignment. That was Philip's task on this occasion. So I want to be very clear here to all of you. We may think that the Lord was sending Philip out into the middle of nowhere, but again, there's no such thing as luck and coincidence when it comes to the Lord. God, he always has a plan. There's always a purpose. There's always a reason for where the Lord sends you on your assignment. That's what my dad taught me when I was growing up. You see, some believers, they, they complain and they can be reluctant. They can be like Jonah when it comes to whatever assignment that the Lord has for them. You see, some, they seek to do some mighty works for God so that they can be praised and glorified, not by the Lord. They want to be applied by all of those that are around them that, that may see what they do. See, some, they seek to carry out God's assignment solely to try and gain some wealth because, again, this is what life is all about for them. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that if that's what you think uh, God assigns you for is for, for this right here, for you to, to get some of this, then you, you are in the wrong workplace. And there are sadly many more that think the assignment is too tall for them to, to be able to handle and I say to all of you that may think that way, don't think that way. Because again, God is with you. Now, I want you to notice that Philip, he didn't complain not one time about the assignment that God had given to him. All right, all right. Philip, he didn't complain about where the Lord had sent him. Mm -hmm. Philip, I want you to understand, he didn't look down on this assignment because he was sent to a Gentile. As we have seen already, Philip had already been preaching to them. Yeah, yeah. Philip, he simply accepted the task that had been assigned to him. And we'll see that he listened to the spirit there. Yeah, yeah. 
In the 30th verse, we're told that Philip, he ran up to the eunuch. Mm -hmm. He could hear where the man had been reading from in Isaiah. And there in our key verse, there in the 30th verse, we'll see that Philip, he asked, hey, do you understand what it is that you are reading? To which, again, we see that the eunuch responded, I need some guidance. How can I understand if there's nobody to guide me? Now, I want you to understand that the eunuch didn't need help reading. The, the eunuch knew how to read. I believe that's kind of clear to us. What the eunuch needed help with was, again, understanding the word of God. He needed help understanding what it was that he was reading. All right. And God, he sent Philip to this man to help guide him, didn't he? The Lord sent Philip to this man to help guide him to know the divine truth. There are more ways to help than just that dollar bill. Do you see what your assignment is from the Lord? Do you recognize it? What your assignment is from the Lord today? Now, I'll tell you that I love the eunuch's admission here to the fact that he needed some guidance, that he needed some help when it came to understanding the word of God. You see, in order for anyone to ever truly gain understanding, they must admit when they don't know, when they don't understand, especially when it comes to the word of God. Nobody, as you have heard me say before, nobody is perfect. Nobody knows everything, especially when it comes to the word of God. You may look at me and you may say, oh, pastor, he knows everything. I don't know everything. I just happen to study a bit more than you may. So in order for anyone to ever truly gain understanding, one must be able to admit when they don't understand. And one must be open to that help that God, especially when it comes to the word of God, they must be open to that help that the Lord will send their way. As it is said in the book of Proverbs, to understand a proverb and an enigma, that is a difficult and a wise word, one must seek to attain wise counsel. God, he has a task for you today. And I want you to understand that the task that the Lord has for you today is to be just that. You are to be that wise counsel for somebody somewhere. You see, many find scripture to be nonsensical. And because they can't understand scripture, many will put the word of God down and they will say, man, there must be something wrong with the word of God. When in actuality, as I said last week, there's something wrong with us. And so here we are today as God's children. The task that the Lord has for us who have been on this journey for quite some time. All of us who have been on this walk of faith for quite some time, I want you to understand today that you are an elder in the faith. And so the task that God has for us is for us to impart the wisdom that we have gained unto all of those that are in need of guidance. We are to impart our wisdom unto all of those that come to us and say, help me understand. As Paul wrote to Timothy, the believer must be ready at all times. Yeah, yeah. Paul said that we must be ready to convince. We must be ready to rebuke. We must be ready to exhort with all patience and teaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As we know, the principles that we as believers live by, again, is that of compassion and love. We are, again, to impart what is necessary for edification that again is uplifting, that again is building up another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Philip, he could have been like some are today. He could have believed himself to be too big for the task, for the job. Could have looked down on the eunuch and could have passed him by. Mm -hmm. 
But yet there in the second of my key verses in the 31st verse, we'll see that Philip chose to do otherwise. What did he choose to do? Philip, he chose to go and sit with the eunuch. What do you think that you're supposed to do today when somebody is on the side of the road, metaphorically speaking, and in the need of help? You see, Philip, he conducted himself, as we learned in our sermon last week, Philip, he conducted himself being lowly, caring, and with a tender heart. He was compassionate, walking worthy of the calling. You see, I believe that Philip, I believe that he remembered the day that Jesus was compassionate towards him. When Philip had suggested that Jesus show him and the other disciples the fathers so that they could have proof of who Jesus said he was when Jesus said that he was the way, the truth, and the life. You know, Philip, again, he could have been like those of the Laodicean church. Could have been like those who was of the church of Ephesus and, again, not cared or moved out of bitterness. But what good would that have did for him and the eunuch? As we saw last week, the only thing that would have done is hurt Philip's soul And it would have hurt the eunuch's soul, the eunuch who, again, as we see here, desired to grow in his heart. So, again, we'll see there that Philip, he sat with the eunuch and he helped him to know about the suffering servant. And taking on the task that God had for him, we'll see there in the 34th and in the 35th verse, we'll see that Philip helped the eunuch come to know his Savior, Jesus Christ. Scripture tells us that as they went down the road, they saw some water. And this tells you what Philip did for the eunuch here. As we'll see there that the eunuch, seeing the water, desired to be baptized. And we'll see there in the 36th, the 37th, and in the 38th verse that Philip, he baptized this eunuch. Mm -hmm. Philip, I want you to understand, Philip, He completed that task. He completed that assignment that had been given to him by the Lord. And and I want you to pay close attention to what was accomplished by Philip, as we'll see there, that when the task was done, when the assignment was done, we are told that the eunuch rejoiced in his heart the eunuch was uplifted. Philip built this eunuch up in his soul. Do you see what you can do for someone somewhere? If you complete the assignment that the Lord has tasked for you to do in helping others, in guiding others. Again, I repeat to you today that God, he has a task for you. And in that task, the Lord, he desires for you to draw others unto him. You are to be a fisher of others. This was a task that the collective church, I used to see it doing it all the time back in the day. I think of people like my dad, man, my dad would go out anywhere and tell anybody about how good God is. And man, I used to be ashamed of my dad doing that. Man, I used to tell my dad. <laughs> but but my dad would get out of my way. I mean, he didn't physically do that, but he spiritually did that. You could not shut people like him up about how good God is. About all that the Lord had brought them through about how Jesus had uplifted them, how Jesus had saved their souls. They knew they had a heavenly home and they wanted others to be up there with them. And so they did the best of their abilities. They did the best that they could do. They may have not known everything about the word of God. I hope you're listening to me here clearly. But they said what they could to persuade someone to know the Lord, to build them up. Are you building up others today or are you too afraid to do it? 
Today, I want you to understand that all believers, we are to preach repentance. We are to all preach the remission of sins. And again, I want to put emphasis on all believers are to preach. You see, I don't want you to be looking around the room after hearing that and saying, who, me? I'm supposed to preach. You see, that's what many of us do. Because we think that the assignment, we think that the task, that it falls solely at the feet of the preacher. When in actuality, all of us, we are to be laboring for the Lord. And I say to you today that too many of us, we have not accepted the task that God has given to us. And what this has done is it has hurt us and it has hurt all of those that are around us. After Jesus' death and his resurrection, the disciples, they would have left many souls in the well of sin had they did what they began to do. They tried to go back to living their old lives. They tried to go back out to sea. What good would they have did for those who own land? Jesus, he had to get on them. He had to come to them. He appeared to them and he gave them breakfast by the sea. He fed them. And then he pulled Peter to the side and he spoke to Peter, you know, the one who's supposed to be the leader of the disciples. And we see in scripture that to Peter, Jesus, he asked him, he said, do you love me? And you know, old Peter, I love you. Yeah, I love you. What you doing? You know, I imagine I love me some Peter. I imagine Peter looked at Jesus like he was crazy. Man, what you, of course I love you. I may have, I may have denied you that one time, that, that second time, that third time, but I'm doing better now, Jesus. I, I love you. Of course I love you. And scripture tells us that Jesus, he asked him that a second time. And I imagine Peter was like, yeah, I, I, I love you. Then Jesus, he asked him that uh, again. He asked him that a third time. And now I imagine Peter was just like, okay, you know, now, now you're doing too much, Jesus. You, you already asked me that one time. You asked me that again. Why, why are you doing it again? Yeah, I love you. Why you keep asking me that? To which Jesus, after, you know, Peter would say the first time, I love you. Jesus, he, he said to him, feed my lambs. Then the second time, and Jesus said to him, tend to my sheep. Mm-hmm. Then the third time, Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Mm-hmm. Do you know what the point is? The point is, is that Peter and the other disciples, they had work to do. Mm-hmm. It wasn't vacation time. Right. It wasn't time for them to go back and live their lives. Mm-hmm. See, that's what many of us do. We come to church. We join the church. We think that the task is over with. And then we walk out the doors after we have been baptized and we never come back. We don't realize that the walk of faith, all it did is just begin. There is work for us to do. God has a task for you. Are you doing it today? See, again, I tell you today that We are to help guide all of those that are around us to know the divine truth. You see, there are many around you that are in need of someone to guide them to know the Lord. Yes, this world is becoming worse and worse. Yes, you know, we see the wickedness and the evil in the world. But as I preached to you all earlier this year, God is still sowing his seed. And there are many that are still growing up in this world today that needs to be guided to know the divine truth. Mm -hmm. The question that we must answer today is whether or not we truly are helping those in need. Mm -hmm. Are we putting forth the effort Mm -hmm. or are we throwing money, for an example? Are we taking the easy way Mm -hmm. when it comes to helping those that are Mm -hmm. in need? when we know that we should be going the extra mile. Yes, we should certainly give to others what we have physically 
to be able to give to them, to help them out. But I want you to consider today that there is greater help. There is greater help that we can give to all of those that are around us, especially when it comes to gaining understanding, to knowing the divine truth, to knowing the Lord, to walking in holiness and righteousness. There is a greater work that we can do today. The values and the principles of the faith that we live by, it is to enlighten, to enlighten all of those that are around us. So as Paul encouraged the Philippians, I encourage you today, do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. We are to shine as lights in the world that is according to Jesus. We are to be that city on a hill, guiding all of those to knowing the Lord. Will you put forth the effort today? My encouragement for you today is you better let that candle burn bright. You better let your heart burn bright because I'm telling you, as you see in the book of Revelation, the Lord, he's looking at his candlesticks. And I tell you, you don't want the Lord to put your flame out. So again, God has a task for you. I hope you know what that task is now. And I hope that you'll put forth the effort to carry out that task. Amen. 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 Amen.